converted this 2014 Ford Transit Custom panel van into my own self-built camper. Hi, I'm Nick the Geek and this is my long-term review of my self-built camper van conversion. Welcome back to my 2014 Ford Transit Custom self-built camper van conversion. For those of you who haven't seen my previous video, I'll leave a link in the description below where I did a van tour just after I'd completed it. For those of you who are returning, it's good to see you again. I had a lot of comments and questions about my previous video and uh, I'll run through some of those in this video. But what I really want to do is have a little run through about how my first year of uh, camper van ownership has gone, what bits I forgot to mention in the first video, how I found living with the Ford Transit Custom, have I even managed to go anywhere due to lockdown, how I got on re-registering it as a camper van with the DVLA, and most importantly, what changes have I made since originally completing it. So, starting off with the one that I get asked most often, what did it cost for the conversion? So the van, it's a 2014 Ford Transit Custom, 2.2 hundred horsepower. It's got around 113,000 miles on the clock and it cost me six and a half thousand pounds. Now that is significantly less than a VW T5 of the same era. As far as converting it goes, I spent around the same again on the conversion. So the main costs were the units uh, around a thousand pounds and uh, these came from Evo Motion Design. The rock and roll bed, that was about 500 pounds. The windows were about 700, the fridge another 500 and the sink and the hob there were a couple of hundred. I could have done it cheaper if I wanted to, I'm sure, but I'm quite happy with the amount that I spent and what I got for it. As for why I didn't go with a pop top, as you can see, it's a solid roof. So I built this van purely for my own personal use for photography trips. Now in around 2010, I was quite heavily into my photography. And at the time I had a VW T25 camper and someone else had done their own conversion with that. Now that was a tin top version and I never felt like I was missing out by not having one. I'm only likely to travel in this on my own and with pop top conversions being about three thousand pounds i thought i'd save the money and use it elsewhere so what i did decide to do though and those of you with an eagle eye might have spotted it on the intro video but i've fitted a side awning now what i wanted to do was re-register my camper van as a motor caravan with the dvla now on the dvla website they list a set of external features which are commonly seen in motor caravans and they say you've got two or more windows on at least one side of the main body, a separate door giving access to the living accommodation, motor caravan style graphics on both sides of the vehicle, an awning bar attached to either side and a high, to high top roof which is not a pop top. There's also a checklist that you've got to complete and send back ticking off which of the common features your van has because the DVLA wish to see a combination of the ones that they've listed. So at the time that I'd finished mine, I'd got the windows, I'd got the separate door, I'd got stickers which quite blatantly said camper on the side. Now I thought I'd be able to increase my chances of reclassifying it if I added an awning, as I'd then be ticking off four of those five things that they expected to see. So the awning that I went for, it was the Fiamma F45S, um, and I fitted that one myself. So after doing that, I sent off all my documents and photographic evidence to the DVLA. And after what seemed like an age, I got my refusal letter back. So the DVLA had decided that although the interior matched all of the requirements, the exterior didn't have the features that they wanted to see. So needless to say, I didn't quite leave it there. And I wrote back to them asking what it didn't have that they actually wanted to see. Now I'll cut a very long story short, but after about three or four letters back and forth, 
me escalating it to the CEO of the DVLA, they still haven't provided a satisfactory answer. I presume they just don't want white vans being reclassified as motor caravans. They quite simply couldn't tell me what they would need to see in order for my van to be reclassified. I think that's the most frustrating thing. If you have a checklist, if you have a list of things and then you get evidence showing all of that, but what can I do? I've, I've made my complaints, it's not happening. Moving swiftly on. So did I manage to get away in the van? Well, with COVID, lockdowns and work commitments, it wasn't easy, but I did manage three trips in the van last year. I converted this Ford Transit Custom into a camper van so that I could try and rekindle my love of photography. So for my first trip, I decided on one nice, easy journey from where I live in Leicester to the Trossachs in Scotland, a six hour drive to really see if the van could handle it, which it did. Now I got there, I used the Park for Night app to find a nice spot near Loch Acre, which is where I camped for the night. And I woke up really early to go and take some photographs. Now the, the bed, it was good, although it was quite hard because it was new. Now I presume that's going to ease up over time, but I've recently found these Duvalet um, combined mattress and sleeping bags and I'm thinking I might go and buy one of those for my next trip. But being a normal rock and roll bed it was really easy to fold it up in the morning. It's not like some of those where you've got to move it forward and then swivel over a seat and then push it back. It's just lift it up and it's closed. So after my sleep I was really lucky with the weather for sunrise. It had been raining the entire night before and this morning there was just this incredible mist over the locks. Fantastic to see. Really nice reward for the journey. So this trip it taught me the first thing that was an issue with the van and it's because I deliberately went for the long wheelbase version and I haven't put swivel seats in and um, when cooking I found that I had to have the bed fully extended so that I could get nearer the hob and uh, and be able to cook the only problem with that is when I've got the bed extended I can't get in any of the drawers and I couldn't open the cupboard to turn the gas on and then you can't put the table up if you've got the bed all the way forward so that was the one thing that I knew that I'd really have to sort out anyway I spent that one night in Scotland uh, the midges feasted on me and I got fed up and I decided to drive home so my second trip uh, that was to the Lake District now this is my favorite place to visit and it's where I always used to go and photograph when I had my old van so I really wanted to return. So this time, instead of using Park for Night, I decided to book a pitch on a campsite in Keswick. Again, the van performed absolutely fine. And again, the only issue was with the cooking and eating configuration of the van. Again, a couple of days of photography, really enjoying it. And it was nice. So the final trip was another long journey. Now this time I decided instead of going north, let's go south. And this time we're going to go to Cornwall. So again, it's somewhere I'd previously been to go and take photos and somewhere that I wanted to go again. Now by this time I was a member of the Camping and Caravanning Club. I thought it would be worth taking out membership with the RAC in case of breakdown. And it came with a deal of a year's free membership to the Caravanning and Camping Club. So I booked a pitch at the Senan Cove campsite and uh, headed down. Got there about an hour or so before sunset and immediately made my way to Land's End for photography. So the next two days were spent enjoying the vistas and the van and the photography. But unfortunately, by this time, the diesel heater, which had worked perfectly in the Lake District and in Scotland, had gone a bit temperamental and it had started failing to fire up. It would flash an EO8 message, which obviously I've Googled, and it's a flame out, but I couldn't understand it. Sometimes it would work, sometimes it wouldn't. But 
on this trip it didn't work and that combined with the gale force winds and the October coldness meant I cut short my trip and I came home a day early. All in all though, am I happy with how I've built the van? Yeah, I am. But the only thing I had left to do was work out a solution for this cooking problem. So earlier on in the year, and because I was trying to avoid places where other people might be and I wanted to stay self-contained, I bought a Thetford Porter Potty 345, which I'd had in the boot area of the van. Now I'd seen on eBay that people were making custom buddy boxes for these portaloos. And earlier this year, I found someone who would make me one using the same wood as the rest of the units. Now that solves my problems actually, because I fitted it in the living area of the van. Now, not only does it keep the toilet nice and secure and stop it from sliding around, but it also doubles up as a seat for me to sit at when I'm doing the cooking. One bit I forgot to mention in my original video was my rear view mirror. Now I'd fitted this while I was doing the conversion and because the van was originally a panel van with no rear view mirror and a bulkhead in the way, it's impossible to see behind you. Now this Lenovo mirror is actually a wide touchscreen LCD. It's a dash cam and it's got front and rear facing cameras. The rear camera, I've mounted it just underneath my number plate and that feeds through as if it was a real mirror. You can use the touch screen to look up and down and you can swipe on the mirror to switch between the front and the rear cameras. Things great for visibility. As far as reliability with a Ford Transit Custom goes, I've had a few mechanical issues with the van, uh, mainly around uh, DPF injectors and, um, and a sensor but as of yet I've not had anything too serious. On the whole I'm really pleased with the conversion it's done everything that I've needed it to and I'm really looking to going back out in this Ford Transit Custom self-built camper van conversion just as soon as lockdown's over. Thank you very much for watching. If you liked this video, please feel free to press the like button below, leave a comment in the section, or subscribe if you want to see more of my videos. Until next time, bye bye.